So what I'd love to kind of explore in this session is, is how we do incentives well in communities. So my philosophy for many years has been that people join communities for a reason. They don't join communities um, because they haven't got anything else to do. They join for a reason. And it could be to solve their problems. It could be to meet people, to get mentoring. Um, but when you join a community, you start as a casual member. You don't really know anyone. And then as you participate more, you become a regular member and you start showing up every day. And, oh, hang on, request edit. Request edit access. Let me just check one second. Uh, Raymond, you should be able to see that document. Hang on, let me just make sure I give you the same doc. Yeah, you should be able to see that document, Raymond. I can see a bunch of people in there. Um, let me know if hey, you do Jono, have any. You can't, we can get in, but we can't type. Oh, hang on. Let That's me double check. edit part of requesting edit access. Aha, uh, uh -huh. thank you, Lisa. All right, reload everyone, sorry. It turns out I don't know how to use Google Docs. <laughs> I'll add that to the litany of other things <laughs> that I don't know how to use. Um, um, so Aaron, uh, there is, there is uh, Amber Gray in the session is on the other track, which is about running events. So just again, just as a, a recap for folks who are joining, who are joining this session right now, uh, the, the event session, which Amber is gonna be coordinating is on the other track, okay. So, um, so when people join communities, I, I'm of the view that they, they start out as casual members, then they become regulars, they start becoming very active, and then, and then a small number of people will become super active, very, very enthusiastic um, core members of a community. And incentives are a great way of moving people through that journey, you know, because I think we're all fundamentally incentivized. Like, you know, for example, we collect airline miles, or back when we could go to coffee shops, we'd get coffee card you know coffee cards and you get them stamped when you got 10 coffees you'd be able to get a free coffee and all kinds of different things so those kinds of incentives i think are a really interesting way of saying okay here's a reason to come and participate um to trigger the right kind of behavioral patterns that i think we want to see in communities whether it's mentoring or collaboration or building software or whatever else but what should those incentives look like uh, and that's kind of what i'd love to dig into in this session so maybe we can start out with one question for everybody and you can put it into the chat or you can share here as well what kinds of incentives and rewards have you seen that have really resonated with you you know that, that when you when you've seen them in action whether it's swag that people get or recognition what have you seen and then i'll, I'll read out some of the chat but also i'd love to hear from my fellow panelists here as well So we've got Ken, Ken Weimer. Hey, Ken, I haven't talked to you in about 600 years. Uh, T-shirts. John, I think you brought it up on, on the last call. Public acknowledgement is huge. I mean, just, and saying thank you. I mean, a lot of us in community really just do it to, to say, to have someone say thank you. Um, and doing that publicly and acknowledging them is amazing. Yeah. I, I totally agree with you. So I'm just going to read out a couple of ones here. Free cruise from the Royal Caribbean. <laughs> uh, bug bounties uh, from Terry, a membership badge for their community page from Neil. Um, uh, Rose said, getting a thanks, like you just said, Lisa Marie. Um, Melody says, recognition from the CEO. Raymond says, celebrating a milestone is a good way to recognize people. Brian, reputation, recognition. Neil, membership badge. Um, a lot of this is, re is recognition. Um, so why don't we dig into that a little while, a, a, like a little bit, what do you think are the most critical elements of recognition as a group? And again, just to remind everybody, if you want to come and join as a panelist and join Lisa Marie and Clement and, uh, Andy and the rest of us, just let me know in the chat and then I'll add you as a, as you, as a panelist, so you can come and chat with us as well. But what, what recognition would you all recommend? Cause I can share things that I found to that work well, but um, what would you what would you recommend? I think simple. Oh, I know. In in my case, I was I was trying to think, and just having my name, you know, associated to a release of a software or something like you know, in the release note or like yeah, th those were the people that contributed to producing this thing. So it can be a software or a blog post or whatever. I think just having the name kind of. I, 
I think it, it kind of please everyone's ego a bit, you know, say, oh yeah, yeah, I did this great thing and it's it's there now, it's online for everyone to show. You can share with your friends or your family and say, oh yeah, I, I did that. So, yeah. And it's not necessarily something that you get every day from your day-to-day -day job because it's much more like, uh, if you work in a company that is more like closed then you know, it stays within your job or day-to-day -day circle of activities where if you do it in an open open project it's suddenly shared with the world so i think that's maybe the change of of audience that you can you can share your accomplishment with that it's a big uh, a big part into into this recognition aspect yeah hey can i ask a favor this is a uh, another building the car as we're going lisa marie can you um, facilitate for a few minutes because it turns out that people are not able to find Amber's session. I just want to make sure that everybody knows where a session is. I'm going to ask the ATO folks. Is that okay? Sure. Don't put yes. you on the spot. Absolutely. No problem. Um, and I'll start by saying one of the recognition things that we we do at Cockroach, uh, there's actually a Slack channel for it and, and you can do it anonymously, which a lot of people are kind of embarrassed. So you have to, you know, understand that you've got introverts in your community and you have to give people a way to anonymously um, acknowledge people. So we have this, I think it's just on Slack, if you just go like backslash ACK, then it posts it publicly, but it posts it anonymously. And then um, we also had this little competition where if you write a poem, the CTO will actually read it out loud during the all hands. So like a haiku, you know, a really short thing. And then we put the CTO on the spot. Um, and then sometimes people even sing them. It's uh, it's just really creative ways that you do it. But I think the anonymous part is, is something, if you can build that into the code where you're acknowledging people, I think you'll get a lot more people acknowledging people. Uh, one of the things we do, which is very similar, Lisa Marie, is... Um, we do something called Thank You Thursdays. And on Thursday, um, anybody can pop into Slack and recognize someone who's done something you know, wonderful. And it's just grown so much and people just love doing that. And then they pile on top of each other to you know, recognize people. Uh, I think most of us just wanna be valued and heard, right? And recognized. Absolutely. Wolfgang, you joined us. What do you have to say? Wait, you're on mute. Are you getting eaten by a shark? I can't. I, yeah, I we can't, can't hear you, Wolfgang. Sorry. Oh, John, you're back. Yeah. You can, it, it's back. It's yours again. <laughs> we, we, I didn't do anything. Yeah, we try, we're just trying to figure out how to get. I don't know why, but the yeah the schedule is saying that both CLS sessions are coming here. Um, I'm not trying to sub <laughs> sabotage Amber's session, but I'm sure she'd like people to go. So I'm just waiting. Um, yeah, no Wolfgang, can no. we hear you? Can, can you hear me now? Yes. Good. <laughs> so, sorry. So I uh, would like to add to what Nithya said. Uh, we have at our company, we have kudo cards. Um, you can, you know, write thank you note to anyone and then put it in a box and then it's distributed to that person. And it's also uh, taking a picture and uh, then it's like on the on the internet, it's published. And uh, now everybody's working from home. You can do the same thing with uh, online kudo cards. And so it turns out, you know, that's a really small thing, but people like it. People really like it. Yeah, we have added another thing uh, and that is, a, it's a little stuffed animal. It's a little, really, it's a monster from a kid's movie, I guess. And um, it, you wouldn't believe what it does to people, to adults, right? I mean, we have like two or three of these circulating in the company. And uh, instead of, you know, writing a kudu card, which is fine, but you can take that to a person, you go to their office and you give it to them and say, Really, I want to say thank you for this and that and blah. And adults, grown people, right? Their face lightens up and they're just all, wow. So that works. And another thing I would like to add uh, to Jonah, what you said, you know, like little things and stuff. Uh, so I'm a diver, you, <laughs> you can tell from my background. I just today in the mail received this here. 
can you see this now? <laughs> no. No. Oh, so it's a, a five year membership uh, from uh, achievement award from, from Patty, you know, diving organization. And see, I haven't even un unpacked it yet, the little <laughs> button, five year member. And that just receiving this, it, it's a, you know, it's not much, but just receiving this in the mail made me really happy. I'm like, wow, that's cool. So community yeah. work works really well at this point, right? So um, one, one uh, thank you for that, Wolfgang. One one comment that Andy just made in the in the chat is that I talked about submarine incentives early this morning, about how to encourage behavior, uh, and Andy said uh, for me to talk a little bit about that. So just briefly, the idea of this is that the way I kind of look at it is that there's two ways of incentivizing people. I call them stated and submarine incentives. So a stated incentive is where you say if you do this thing, you get this thing. So for example, if you achieve a particular goal in a video game, you get a trophy. Or if you get your question liked by a certain number of people on Stack Overflow, then you get a badge. And, and it can even be if you participate in a competition and you win, you get the prize. So the expectations are very clearly laid up front. Um, the submarine incentive is where you basically use computers to detect when something happens um, and then use a human being to recognize what happens. So this kind of again gets in line with what a lot of people are saying here around recognition being so important. So the example I often give is when I'm working with various companies, especially if we use Discourse, which is a forum platform, they've got these trust models built into Discourse. And the idea is that, you know, trust level zero is which is when you register a new account, they don't know if you're a spammer or not. So the more you read and participate responsibly, you've got to trust level one. And then you go up to trust level two, and then you go up to trust level three, and there's four different trust levels. And what I think is so cool about that is that the platform determines what active participation looks like. And it's not just reading, it's not just writing, it's a combination of reading, writing, filling in your profile, having things liked, you liking things. And, but then you can tie human output to those different levels. So when someone hits trust level two, for example, I always recommend to my clients and communities, um, you share, you know, just recognize that person publicly on the forum um, and just say, you know, we, we love the work that's kind of going on here, uh, you know, that you've been doing. And, you know, you talk about them a little bit and you check with them first to make sure if they want to, if you put their picture up that they're going to be comfortable with it, for example. But it, it delivers this sense of surprise and delight. And that's what I love about it. Opensource.com do something very similar, for example, where when people have, at least they used to, I don't know if they still do it, but when they, people would hit certain levels of contribution in opensource.com, you would just receive something in the mail. Um, or you would get invited to go out to Raleigh to go to All Things Open and then join the Red Hat team for a set of discussions. And it wasn't that they said, if you write 10 articles, we'll send you a branded Bluetooth speaker. It just happened out of surprise. So they were tracking it as a submarine incentive. And I just, I just, so, oh, Raymond says that they're still doing it. I just think that's so amazing um, because you get, like Bruce says, you get that sense of surprise. Um, so I, I don't want to shill my book, but I write about this in People Powered. And um, I think it's, to me, submarine, we often talk about if you do this thing, you get this swag. To me, it's the submarine incentives are really exciting, I think. So any other methods of distributing incentives that anyone, anyone wants to share? Um, I would like to share some ideas from my side. Uh, so for me, joining a community and the incentives behind joining a community is that you meet uh, the people of diverse cultures. And so everybody's contributing their ideas and beliefs and how they work in their cultures. So you get to know the diverse perspectives and then you get to align that, okay, what is happening in this world and what is happening in our world? And then you get try to conclude, okay, what is the best thing which could be really good for the society. So uh, this helps to build, uh, build, build a new society or the build new culture, which is actually good for everybody. So that is what my idea is when I join the, uh, any community. Yeah, wonderful, thank you. Um, just a, a couple of comments from the chat just to make sure that everyone in the chat feels included here as well. Um, so uh, Tamayo um, also says about building surprise and delight systematically into, into the programs. I'm assuming this is at Weaveworks, Tamayo, um, but also probably DevRelCon as well. Um, uh, Joe says, in a, at a past job, we had spot bonuses. You could nominate someone for a spot bonus and your nomination 
will be posted on a special Slack channel, recognition and money reward, which I think is kind of interesting. That actually reminds me briefly that when I was at XPRIZE, I forget what platform it was, but there was a thing where every month employees got 50 bucks and you could spend it on rewarding your, your colleagues. So um, if you did some work with somebody and they did an amazing job, you could give them $5 or $10 or whatever. Um, and it was a relatively small company. It was about 100, 100 people. But what was really cool about it is that all the executives and the senior leaders always got the credit for everything. But the people who consistently earned the, the donations or the, the money from that $50 um, fund for each person were the people who worked in the front desk. It was everybody who was taking the phone calls and shipping out packages. And I thought it was just a really interesting way of identifying where a lot of appreciation was. And then of course they could spend that money on buying whatever gift cards or whatever they could re they could redeem it. So I just think it was a really neat way of, of doing that. Um, yeah, we, we do have that at, uh, at Red Hat. Yeah, we have like, it works by, by quarters. But you, we, people are encouraged to recognize the values that the, the company um, uh, value. And yeah. so you can, you can actually say, oh yeah, thanks you for, for demonstrating this behavior that aligns to the company values. So I think yeah. that's a great way to, to do it. So just Why a quick reminder, just be sorry, just before we go on, because Tomeo just mentioned this. Um, uh, Tomeo, I'm happy to make you a panelist if, if you'd like to. I'd love to have you come and join. And anyone else, anyone else who wants to come and join as a, as a panelist, and you, can, you don't have to switch your video camera on if you don't want to, but um, audio is totally fine. But just let me know in the chat if you want me to add you and I can go and add you right away, everyone. So I want everybody to feel like they can join us. Definitely add to Mayo. Um, so one thing about that acknowledgement that we found is some teams were better at doing it than others. The engineers were really good at acknowledging each other's work. The marketing teams were not, and maybe marketing you know, can be such a thankless job. You're just sort of used to doing it without getting people saying thank you. So what they initiated there is for the all hands team marketing meeting, we start off the meeting by having by saying one thing that you're proud of of yourself and then one thing that you're proud of of somebody else so every week like what are you most proud of and forcing people to do that because people are very uncomfortable talking about themselves but it really elevated a lot of the work that people were doing that nobody knew about and i thought it was a really good tactic to start the meeting with so if you can do that on your online communities as well one thing you're proud of that you've done this week i love that yeah i love that that's awesome so I'm adding, uh, so Tamea is in here and Ray is joining. There he is. Perfect. Hi, Tamea. We've got brand new panelists. Do you want to share any, Tamea, do you want to go, do you want to go first and share anything? Um, I guess I'll follow up with the um, sort of the surprise and delight uh, because in the teams that I've built and the programs that I built, especially around champions programs, um, it's often a challenge to, uh, uh, I don't know if you've heard of the term, <coughs> like they use it in theater so it's like this thing where actors practice and practice and practice to the point that it appears as if it was all improvised and in the moment but there's all this that went into it you know all this practice and preparation and so I think there's a lot of times people who don't understand what we do in DevRel and community stuff where when they see the surprise and delight delight they think it was just oh it's just this fluke this sort of silly thing that you threw out there when it's like completely systematically built into our strategy and how we want to brand ourselves and how we want to present ourselves and often can come into conflict and friction with you know core enterprise branding because they're like oh like we don't want that mascot associated with what we're doing so i mean i would just love to hear how other people are like doing the same thing maybe what how they dealt with some challenges um not to overtake but i would love yeah that sounds great any thoughts anyone And anyone in the chat as well is welcome to, to, to feeding in. I guess I would also add that like, you know, it depends on the company culture that you're in. Like GitHub <laughs> is obviously this great example we keep bringing up because it appears the corporate culture itself obviously supported the Octocat and supported sort of the ways that they engage. So I don't yeah. know what kinds of, um, working cultures people were able to work in where it was flexible or if it was inflexible yeah any thoughts anyone i don't know one of the things i added was that sometimes just giving people flexibility or 
time off or ability to kind of go work on side projects is is itself a huge reward. Um, I have someone on my team who loves it when um, she gets to work on a variety of different things. So, you know, giving her an opportunity to kind of feel the joy of working on things that she wants to is 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 a reward in itself. Yeah. So we've got a couple of comments in the chat just to share as well. So Katie says <clears throat> different people have different types of motivators. Um, stated incentives often have a perceived monetary value where other unstated incentives often have emotional value. What is the best way to combine these for volunteers to increase contributions? Uh, stated incentives often turn people off if they don't have an interest in it. We need to draw in volunteers without showing stated incentives that won't hold interest. And I just, uh, I, I think we should dig into this a little bit because I think it's a really interesting point, Katie. Um, one thing I've just noticed as a data point is that only if you look at video games, for example, only some people collect trophies, which are definition of, of stated incentives, I would argue. Not everybody is a natural collector. Um, they don't collect badges and stack exchange and they don't necessarily care about badges and other platforms. But I would argue that everybody loves that thrill of getting like a submarine reward, you know, where just that surprise and delight out of the blue. Um, I've also noticed that um, people who do collect trophies, for example, they tend to do it at the beginning and then they get bored of collecting trophies. So there's, there's quite some, there's some interesting data out there that seen this in video games as well. Like people collect the first 15 trophies and then that's it. They just, they, the thrill is gone. So, but to go back to Katie's point or, or question here, what is the best way to combine these different approaches for increasing contributions. Does anyone have any thoughts they want to kick in? Um, hi, this is Evan. Hey, Evan. Uh, thanks for bringing me on. Um, yeah. Tiny background. Uh, I'm with the Linux Professional Institute. Uh, we do have a worldwide community, and thankfully, we actually have a little budget to spend on our volunteers. And we've been trying to go back and forth with them to try and figure out what the people want. Um, and you're absolutely right about the submarine uh, incentives that people aren't expecting. And then when they get it, it's just a real surprise. Uh, we've also had uh, success with two things that might be worth. Um, when we do swag or something like that, it seems to be important that the swag be something where the person can use it to identify themselves with the community, that I'm a part of this, I'm contributing to this, and therefore something you know, my time is actually contributing something back to the community. Uh, something as small as laptop stickers, we found have been amongst the most valuable and most interesting swag we can give out, uh, that if they're creatively done, people will, will use them with pride on their laptops. And it show you know, it speaks about them and also it helps promote, the, helps promote us. Uh, at the other end, I posted in the chat a link to a contest that we ran for within our community. And uh, we've always had people that are sort of looking for things that are unusual. And if you look at the link that I posted, it shows a uh, programmable robot penguin uh, that we used as a, a contest giveaway. And it was actually proven to be really popular. We're probably going to be doing it again. Uh, but small things like that. I wanted to actually ask the rest of the panel. Uh, we've sort of been touching upon this and uh, within the organization, we've been talking about this as sort of the gamification of incentives. And that is, you know, like, um, you know, when you're on Google Maps, you get to level one, level two, level three, and you get to get the badge or whatever. Um, Jonah, you were saying that you found that a lot of people didn't, you didn't see a lot of value in those badges. And I wanted to get a better idea of what people thought about the value of people being able to put a badge on their LinkedIn profile or here or there, or whatever, in a way that says, you know, I'm contributing. This is, you know, this is how I'm giving back. Just, just to be clear, <clears throat> when I mention badges, it's not that I think that then they don't have a lot of value. I think that just, I think when it comes to collecting badges, I think only some people are interested in that. But I think maybe what you're talking about here, Evan, is something different, which is a badge is a almost like a sign of identity. Like we're seeing this with politics right now with people who are putting badges for whoever they voted for or to go and vote as a means of placing their flag in the ground. And I do think those are really powerful. Um, so but I'd love to hear other people's thoughts. 
Yeah, I mean, I think like I think video games a good example. Like the the more badges you get, you're basically doing the same thing over and over again. Of you just getting to like a higher level of whatever game you're playing, and I think, I mean, after a while, for a lot of people, like you're you're just being awarded for doing the same thing over and over again. That gets kind of like uninteresting. Like even in open source, people want to like, for example, they're more interested in broadening their skill sets, like learning something new, as opposed to I'm going to fix the same bug or same type of bug, like, you know, you know, after like, if, you know, depending on the person after a while, you know, it's not necessarily going to broaden your like a horizon or your skill set. So I think that might be one of the reasons why people kind of taper off because people want to, you know, they're, they're working on this part of the Kubernetes community, but they want to look at something else and, and then they want to sort of broaden their skill set. So, um, I mean, John, I don't know if that might be a reason, but that could be a possibility yeah. because I've seen people in communities that want to do something different after a while. Like it's the same thing with your normal job, right? Like you yeah. don't want to do the same thing over and over again. So well, our, our approach yeah. to this was that we sort of are trying to assign values to different <clears throat> activities that aren't always in the same, same realm. So if you contribute co code, you get points. If you make a speech to an external organization and you give a talk to somebody, that counts as points. And so it doesn't always have to be the same kind of grind to be able to get people recognition for achievement because that achievement takes many different forms. So it could be squashing a bug. It could be giving a talk to another audience about it. It could be being quoted in a newspaper in a, on a website. It could take many different forms. So I'm hoping that this can be done in such a way that doesn't get people into that kind of rut. You know, there's kind of a, a theme forming a little bit in this discussion around fatigue um like bruce wrote into the chat there are a whole lot of folks doing micro credentialing i wonder about fatigue around this and i think ray you were touching on that a little bit as well just one other data point that i found interesting is <clears throat> is that um i forget the scientific study for this i think it was the yerk dodson study but it basically found that if you over award human beings they become so focused on getting the rewards that they, the, the purpose of the rewards becomes less prevalent. And I've actually seen this myself where there's been a couple of communities that I've seen where they go overboard on really rewarding their members and giving them like really pretty swanky stuff. Um, and then the members are so focused on getting the rewards that they're then doing the work for the wrong reasons. And I've also also noticed this a little bit with kind of old school forum platforms, which where People just wanted to get that badge. If you posted 500 posts, you get like a rank level. And people just wanted that that recognition piece. Um, so they they just start posting, yeah, I agree, and plus one, and all this kind of stuff, and not really adding any content to the conversation. So I think one other thing we should consider here is how do you how do you reward? But I think one of the hardest elements is how do you know that you're not doing it too much? Because there is there is the risk of too much, I think especially if you're flush with money and you can buy a lot of swag for people and ship it out to people all over the world, then it's a very real risk. So. And, uh, and John, if I may ask a question. Yeah. Um, you also mentioned in your book that, you know, people, some, like some people try to cheat to get the awards, you know, just adding plus one and not any content. That's not really cheating, but kind of, but like yeah. actually cheat. So I guess you kind of have to, try to avoid that as well, right? Without putting too many limitations on how to actually earn the award, right? Yeah. I think what it's... Exactly... Sorry, go ahead, go ahead. No, I think it's what uh, is happening with the Oktoberfest, uh, which is um, a program that is, uh, was um, launched by DigitalOcean to uh, like try to get people to contribute to open source projects. And if you are like, I don't know, for like four pull requests during the month of October, they will send you um, a t-shirt. So you would get some stickers and, and a free t-shirt. And yeah, and this year it kind of backfired a little bit because there was a lot of people just opening pull requests to open source project with like some, yeah, like just fixing a typo or changing, like adding a dot at the end of a, of a readme file or stuff like this. So yeah. I can see Oh yeah, you you get more interested by the reward than the actual purpose of the of the initiative. So one one of the questions that Katie wrote into the chat was, how do you let people know the submarine incentives exist without making them stated? Which I think is a great question. My personal view here is that you know you never tell anybody about them. 
that you actually keep them secret. Um, because my worry is, and I think you just highlight this, uh, Clement, is if people know that they exist, um, they will try and game them uh, to the point where my example earlier on of submarine incentives using discourse, um, I actually recommend that whenever somebody takes an approach with submarine incentives with discourse, that they actually go and they rename every instance on, on their discourse um, installation where it says trust levels. Like hide the word trust levels from your community because if people learn about trust levels, they'll be able to find the web page on the internet that shows how you gain the trust levels, even though you can configure it and they'll try and gain it. So, and that's a little difficult thing to wrap your head around, I think, because we're so used to being so open in communities. But I think if you share people that it's a submarine incentive, it's just, it takes its power away a little bit, so. And that's part of your surprise and delight, right? That you're talking right. about. So you kind of take that away. Yeah, and I think also uh, just to add on different points, like especially now more and more people are quite um, opinionated about swag. So if you're very swag heavy, you know, you might actually get a backfire or criticism of how you're not ecologically responsible and how there should be other types of incentives. Um, and then I wanted to kind of plus one on what Raymond had said earlier um, about like when we've when I've designed programs, you know, we said, sure, there's going to be some of these um, uh, extrinsic you know, fun things, but they need to be tagged to surprise and delight. And they also have to be tagged to something that's really intrinsically valuable, which in our case, when we design programs, we're really strongly about learning, like helping people. Cause a lot of times if people are doing open source, they might be trying to get another job. So they really want to learn. Um, or like in a particular case I had, we were a little bit more commercially oriented, but we knew that um, one, our engineers were amazing and people in our community just wanted to engage with our engineers because if they had a talk or if there's something going on, they they would learn a lot. And secondly, we knew that our customers were quite, um, a lot of them were on the cutting edge. So if we would do sort of user community events, people would come, they're like, oh, I saw that one of your customers is speaking on an exact problem that we know we're gonna need to be solving really soon. So we tried to really focus that on, on the learning part and that you really wanted to be part of this community because you're going to find like-minded people or people with similar challenges, you know, who might just be three steps ahead of you or they're, you know, 20 steps ahead of you. And that's, that ex that's exciting as well. So like all the fun kind of stuff and surprise and delight really had to be um, anchored by these core things that we worked on. Yeah, totally. So Katie, we've, we've welcomed Katie to the fold. <laughs> do you want to, do you want to, you, you wanted to make a, a couple of points, Katie? Oh, sorry. You're muted right now. There so my background is in putting incentives in place for communities that already exist. But right now we are working on developing a community that does not yet exist. It is being built from the ground up on a digital level. And we need to draw in the volunteers. Some things will bring people in just because of the nature of the content, but bringing in volunteers, bringing in subject matter experts and developing that incentive to begin with is a big part of these first steps. The submarine or unstated incentives can be used as a community has already been developed and you have that loyalty and that buy-in, but creating that buy-in and creating that um, incentive that will bring people to the platform and not just to collect points and not just to put another badge by their name on another platform and something on their social media profile. So we're looking for that middle ground of how to combine these two pieces and bring it together into a complete package. Yeah. Any thoughts from anyone on that? I have a few thoughts, but I want to make sure I don't monopolize the conversation here. So anyone want to, want to share some thoughts on Katie's question? Uh, well, this is Evan. Uh, I mean, I understand the talk about the fatigue about badges. What we're trying to do with ours is do them in such a way that they could actually help people get jobs if they're on like their LinkedIn profile. I mean, historically, one of the reasons why people got involved in open source projects is it got them on the radar of people that might hire them. And so in one case, if you do the badges right, would it not be able to sort of um, help towards that end? 
Ah, the, the, the badge is a great way to onboard people. So like the stated in incentives are, you can almost make it like a quest to, you know, you want to join this community, go through those steps. And as you go through those steps, you, you earn those badges. And once you, you feel better or you started to be a valued member of the community, maybe more focus a little bit more on the uh, submarine incentives and like move move away from the the badges or like state uh, stated incentives. I do, I do think where there is an opportunity in this kind of uh, to your point, Katie, is uh, with using submarine incentives as a tool within the onboarding process. So when you haven't built that kind of good rule yet. So just to give you an example, um, I can't say who the company is, but a while back I was working with a company to help them build their community, and they have quite a complicated platform that their users use. And it was quite a lot of work to make their first contribution to this community, this online platform. Um, and in many cases, the people who submitted that first contribution, it wouldn't succeed. It wouldn't get approved essentially. Um, so one thing that we did is we, uh, and this was primarily through e email automation. Uh, actually, no, it wasn't through e email automation. Sorry, it was through their platform automation is that we detected when somebody was a brand new user, they went and made a contribution to the platform, which was a big lift. And then if that contribution was rejected, so kind of similar to a pull request being rejected, we'd get a notification of that. And then we'd reach out to them and say, you know, uh, first of all, this is very, very common. Don't worry about it. Like, you know, don't, don't get too disheartened. And then we'd actually send them an ebook that we included on the email that was in that area, in that area that they that they work in, um, just to kind of like that provide some guidance around the next time they have a go at it to kind of get them up and running. Um, and we we found like a, we built a really high level of click rate through that those emails, because I think in that moment of despair of I've spent a ton of time figuring out how to contribute something to your service and then it didn't work, they're probably quite rightfully annoyed. <laughs> And that email was a means of just saying like, we care about you, even though this wasn't successful. And then there was the inverse situation as well, where when they got that first contribution in, which is I think how we tend to naturally gravitate with a lot of open source projects, then they got like, you know, um, a reward uh, for doing it. And I forget what it was. I think it might've been like a $25 Amazon gift card or something like that. But there was an outcome on both of those. And what I learned from that, because that was a complete experiment was being reactive to the negative state was often as much of an opportunity to being reacted to the positive state. And um, I get the impression there's lots of little ways in which we could weave that into our communities. You know, the first time someone contributes something, a bit of documentation, or um, the first time somebody comes to an event, or the first time somebody registers for an event, but they don't show up. Um, you know, there's all kinds of opportunities I think we can weave in, so. Um, I know we've got about five minutes left. Does anybody have any any particular burning topics they want to dig into before we because I want to make sure we can cover as much ground in this session or anything that they really want to say uh, I'll start looking at the chat as well. Um, Madeline, do, do you want to join as a panelist, you said hi yes I'm not sure if you wanted to join because I can add you I can add anyone else as a panelist. Okay, one second Madeline I'm bringing you into the matrix. Okay. All right, Madeline will be here in one second. All right. Okay. Hi guys. Hey. Can you hear me? Yep. Great. Um, I don't have a webcam, but at least you can hear me. Yeah. Um, so the place I've been working at for a couple of years now, we um our incentives when we you know used to go to an office pre-COVID, um were very uh, non-inclusive and it was kind of like beer kegs and certain kinds of foods available in the break room. Um, so do you have any suggestions? Now, we don't have any of those things because uh, we're all working from home. Um, do you have any suggestions that would, for incentives that would work for everybody and that like not um, have anyone feeling left out uh, or couldn't participate because, you know, food allergies or a choice to not drink. Any thoughts, everybody? I have my work with teams, um, working with 
people in, it depends on the size of your team, but identifying the needs. One of the big examples I used to use is you have a someone who just got out of college and moved to a new city. You have a single parent with four kids and you have a, um, a grandfather who has three grandkids and is about to retire. Everybody has very different motivations, but they might still all be working on the same project. So analyzing your team and finding out some of the big categories they fit into, and then having an incentive that allows them to choose from a certain number of things. Like if they reach a point, you can say, you can choose one of these three things. Maybe it's a gift card to the grocery store. Maybe it's a pass for a free movie on Amazon, or it's a um, it's a fruit basket or a box of cookies being sent to their place. So it's different levels of involvement, um, passes to, right now socialization is difficult, but creating a socialized environment and giving the incentive to allow for socialization is something that yeah. can be. Yeah, I think looking for the motives of why people show up every day is a good idea. Thank you. Along the, sorry, along the same lines as Katie said, uh, what we've been doing is we are actually asking people to update uh, a SharePoint site with their um, food preferences and allergies so that we know ahead of time, you know, what people will eat and won't eat. And we try very hard to kind of factor that into any decisions for, uh, you know, team get togethers and uh, make that work for everybody. That's a good idea. Thank you. I, I also just put a link into the chat. I actually put a video out about three weeks ago with some recommendations around swag. Just think a couple of things that I've learned that maybe or may not be useful. And one other thing is I joined an event last week where they had really focused on a very social environment. People could join like groups and get to know each other. And it was a lot of fun. And I, I actually regret that we didn't have something like that with CLS, because that's often one of the main things that people really enjoy about CLS is that social component. Um, and that's one thing I'd love to explore more as well is baking social time into these kinds of sessions. So uh, We've got one minute left. Any questions? or any comments or anything else? Just want to do a plug for my um, moderation that's coming up next, which is 4 to 4.45. If you're interested in um, how to mentor and develop new community managers, uh, please do join. And it's the same Zoom. Um, we look forward to having you cont contribute there. Yeah. And many of you know this already, but Nithya is incredible. So that's going to be a great session. Uh, um, also, um, in the next session as well, there's going to be the other CLS session is from Van, who's going to be running a session on creating a healthy community culture. Um, and he's going to be approaching it very much from the, the person as opposed to the metrics perspective more. So I'd encourage you to go to one of those two sessions. And then, of course, we will be reconvening at the end of CLS, which will be 5 p.m. Eastern time, where we'll be doing wrap up and summaries from all of these different sessions. So you can you can hear what happened in a bunch of sessions that you're unable to join. So 